We just got back from 76 days in the Algarve. And it was a wonderful time. And such a thrill to meet so many of our viewers there. We had no idea mm. how many people would try the Algarve and uh, look out for us. And we had many, many uh, very nice interactions with you. So thank you for being brave enough <laughs> to say hello to yeah, us. Yeah, it was great. We was really awesome. enjoyed it. So let's talk tech. Yes. This is becoming a bigger part of our lives and it makes our lives easier, it makes retirement fun. So when we went away, we took our Amazon Fire Stick, um, as well as a few other little things that we like to take with us. But the Amazon Fire Stick is a wonderful thing we travel with it quite a bit. We take it to our trailer so that we can watch TV from home up there without having to buy cable TV. We primarily watch um, Netflix and Amazon Prime, and we recently changed our internet provider to Bell, and they threw in a basic TV package that includes one sport channel. So we took that with us, didn't we, Tim? Yes, we did. And it was wonderful. But before you leave home with an Amazon Fire Stick, make sure you've downloaded the apps to your cable TV provider um, so you can access um, TV from home. Um, we also find it invaluable to put a VPN on our Fire Stick just to give us the added protection. We have the VPN on our phones, on our tablets, and on the Fire Stick. Because when you're traveling, you just don't know whose Wi-Fi you're on. Um, so it's best to protect yourself. And what do we do with the VPN team? Well, we use NordVPN. And it's a wonderful VPN because it allows you to set a country that you, you're not in. So when we were in Portugal, we sent it to Canada in Toronto and we were able to access our Amazon Prime Canadian uh, address there. Um, and it allows you this global skipping around, which is um, very assured. And also uh, it protects you from these man in the middle where you might be on somebody's Wi-Fi network, where they are eavesdropping on your internet traffic so that they can either steal your identity. We had to use our NordVPN was that one of Norm's favorite is the Formula One. And we realized that to be able to do this, we would have to go through the VPN to say that we were in Canada, although we were actually in Portugal, wasn't it, Norm? Very much so. Formula One raced again the next yeah. week. Um, we didn't really want to go back to the bar because they were very begrudgingly putting it on instead of football, mm -hmm. or we should say soccer for the North Americans, because that's far bigger than Formula One. So the second race, we're in our apartment in our second hotel, the Paladin, and I think, oh, I'm clever dick, I'll put the Amazon Prime on. And so we clicked on our Bell Fibe app for TV, got to the Sport uh, TSN2 that uh, hosts the race, and Bell said it wouldn't play it because we weren't in Canada, even though we had, we were running NordVPN and basically we were telling it it was in Canada, yeah. but Amazon's um, settings in the Fire State was telling Bell that we were in Portugal. So the solution to that is if you have a laptop, unlike um, smart TVs, you can fool with a VPN where you are. We had the Bell Fibre app on the laptop, a MacBook Pro. We clicked on it, but we'd already set the VPN for us to be in Canada, and it worked. Bell didn't know that we weren't in Canada. So it was if you're, awesome, if wasn't you're having it? trouble <laughs> connecting out of country, 
on your Fire Stick with uh, a, a VPN, try using a laptop because they don't tell the apps where you are in the world. Yeah, it worked great, didn't it? It really did. Yeah, and we enjoyed the race. So the first uh, hotel that we were in was the Luna Solar Q, a one bedroom apartment. And we were having trouble with the Fire yeah. Stick. We just couldn't get it to work. Um, there was a number of reasons. Um, firstly, there was actually no um, sockets, no power sockets actually on the wall where the TV was. That was a major problem, wasn't it? Because there was no way of plugging it in. <laughs> the TV was hardwired into yeah. the electrics, which I've never seen before. No. So no outlets on that side of the, the wall. Um, we would have needed uh, a, a very large extension cable um, to plug in on the opposite side of the apartment. So that was just a no-go. Mm -hmm. um, second hotel, the Paladin, once again, we took a look at the TV, 25 inch it was TV. Tiny, wasn't it? Just tiny. I couldn't see any HDMI. No. So we, we talked to the reception people yeah. and they said, oh no, oh, people, no. people well, are all watching well, it here. All, yeah. They've all got their Amazon Fire <laughs> yeah. Sticks here. So she sent up the maintenance yeah, man, the techie guy. And so what does he do? He just pulls the, the TV, TV off, off the, the wall. wall flips it over to see <laughs> to see a very hidden yeah. HDMI. We couldn't even see it, could we? And he brought a power outlet um, extension with three outlets in it. So um, we he did manage to get it to work, didn't we? Yep. Uh, we were very grateful that it worked. Now, we will say, by the way, if you were in a studio in the Lunar Solar Queue, they got it to work because they did have power, but we didn't. So in the end, it was great that we did get to enjoy the Formula One, wasn't it? Through now, we did meet another one of our viewers just yeah. when we were walking around. And so he was discussing the whole um, fire stick thing because he'd seen our videos yeah. about the fire stick. So he brought a fire stick, but he was very clever. And it's a tip that we'll pass on to you mm -hmm. is that... He brought a very long HDMI cable. So instead of having an electrical cable, he had HDMI to HDMI. And basically, he was able to remove the fire stick off the TV 15 feet away so he was nearer the outlet. So that was Yeah, that was wonderful. very handy. So we learned a lot chatting to him, didn't we? We did, and we, ne we never took our cable, <laughs> we, no, which we do we, have. Yeah, we so actually, next time... We're going to take the cable with us. So that was a learning experience. In the Paladin, we felt very exposed because the, they didn't have a deadbolt on the, no. the door. Uh, initially, the chain didn't work, as we've said in previous videos. So they did put a new chain on but that was the only security that we had. Mm -hmm. If somebody had a pass key, um, it was all credit card touch yeah. keys. Um, they they could get into the room quite easily. Um, you know, the, the chains don't stop people. They can just kick that door open. So what we had done was prior to going away, we bought this gizmo, which is a door lock believe it or not, and it fits right in the, the regular lock, the latch of the door. So that goes in there. And then basically this wedges between, I'm trying to show you. So that's in the door latch. The door's here and this wedges between the two. So you've got these metal plates that are in the uh, in, in the latch, uh, and then you have this plastic, which is metal reinforced, wedging the door closed. And we felt very secure using that. It was great, wasn't it? And to show you um, why this sort of thing is important, um, we did actually move hotels and we stayed at another hotel the night before the flight, didn't we? In Faro. Yeah. And although we didn't put this on the door there because there was a deadlock on it, 
What was surprising was we were actually just getting ready to have an early night, weren't we, around yeah. 8 o'clock. And all of a sudden, there was somebody trying to get into our door and they were making it. They, you could see, you could hear the noise of the card and they were trying to get in because... The they were able to unlock the door, Yeah, but we had the deadbolt on, Tom, so yeah. they couldn't get in. No, so they unlocked it, but couldn't actually get in. So we then opened the door to talk so to them. What the hell are you doing? You know, when this is our room. And they, she said, no, this is my room. I've just been given this room. So we explained there was a problem with room, but they actually gave our room away to somebody else. True mistake. Yeah, it was an innocent mistake. But it goes to show that that can happen and they could give away your room to somebody else. So it's a bit of extra protection, isn't it? And one last yeah. quick uh, tip is if you travel with a hard drive, um, I normally take those uh, external hard drives that spin around, or you plug them into your computer, but they're quite a box. They're like double the size of a deck of, a pack of cards, playing cards. Yeah. Recently on this trip, I decided I need to pack a little lighter. So that's the <laughs> same hard drive as my bigger one. It's amazing, um, isn't it? It's two terabytes yeah. of storage. But it's tiny. And it's solid state, so there's no spinning in it. So if I drop it, the disc yeah. doesn't break. Um, and That's this has awesome. been wonderful. USB-C, yeah. download all our videos, all our pictures. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to put your music on there, uh, then you have a complete store of your music. But two terabytes, tiny, and weighs next to nothing. So we hope everybody's keeping well. And staying safe. And until the next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.